Hi, I just finished the last movie I'm going to be watching in August, just like right now, like I just literally turned off my TV. Um, so I only watched six movies that I own this month, but I watched a show and it took me a lot longer to get through it and it should have, so that kind of took a bit of stop on watching things. All together, I watched... Um, 17 movies, 18 movies, I don't know how to do math, but I watched one show, um, did I, yeah, and I watched a documentary, but it was really short, kind of documentary, but in any case, okay, the first movie I watched in August was Leave No Chase, I haven't, I need to watch this more often than I do, I've only seen it like three times, but, um, I just felt the need to rewatch it. Because this movie is beautiful. They shot and just acted. I need to rewatch it more. I actually watched uh, Jojo Rabbit last month and I loved it a lot. Did I watch it last month? It would have to be last month. Let's see. Um, it doesn't say. Hmm. Maybe I watched it two months ago. I don't know. But I've seen Jojo Rabbit in any case. But yeah, uh, Thomason McKenzie is in this. And this was her debut. And she's obviously in Jojo Rabbit. So, you know. Um, so I was like, I didn't even want to rewatch it because I just watched Jojo Rabbit not too long ago. But it's so, like, it's so good. The ending is so good. It's so sad, but it's just, like, beautiful. Okay, and then... Um, August, I always forget their birthday. I'm the worst fan of all time. Cole and Dylan's birthday was at the beginning of August. It's either, I think it's the third. I don't know. But it was their birthday, so I watched three movies on that day. I watched Banana Split. I've seen that three times now. I've seen it on Amazon Video. Um, because I bought it. And then I rewatched it, uh... Now, have I seen it three times? Or maybe only twice. No, I've seen it three times. I've seen it three times. And then we watched it when it was on Netflix, because it came out on Netflix. And then we watched it on Netflix, just because I, I, I was like, I want to watch it again. And then we watched it for uh, him and Cole's birthday. And I watched Banana Split first, because Dylan's the oldest. So I thought it makes sense to watch his movie first. And I love Banana Split. I need, I need to watch it more. I do like it a lot. And then I watched Five Feet Apart. I have I bought it on Amazon Video because I've watched this so much that like the Blu-ray doesn't even work anymore. And I don't know how I didn't know that a Blu-ray could do that. I didn't know Blu-ray could just like stop working. I thought they could they, they were supposed to have like uh scratch resistance or something but it wouldn't work and so I bought it on um, Amazon video I've, I've, I've just watched this so much and it's not like the best movie but I just love it so much I've watched it a bunch um, and then I watched their first film which was Big Daddy and there were six in this movie and I think this is the cutest movie ever made <laughs> Or at least one of the cutest movies ever made. So I watched those for their birthday. And then I watched Christmas in July. I get, uh, I still have Netflix DVD. Cause not everything's on streaming. <clears throat> so I still have Netflix DVD. And I wanted to get this in July, obviously. But it came in the beginning of August. So I was like, I'll watch it now. Who cares? And I watched it. And it was pretty good. Um, so. <laughs> um, and then I watched Sleeping with Other People, which is a new to me. And I enjoyed it, but at the, at the I thought it was okay. Like, I enjoyed the concept of it, but, like, I don't know. Um, I don't like when people who aren't traditional and 
live like an untraditional life and a life that they're really happy with. I don't like when they turn traditional. Like they have like a kind of open relationship in this sh in this movie because they were both sex addicts and I really loved that. I really loved something different in a uh, in a kind of romantic comedy where it's like they both have relationships with other people because they are like that way like they're very open to everyone and then they get more into like a um, normal relationship where they want to get married and they only want to focus on each other and I mean I guess like that's what's supposed to happen but to me again I just I love unconventional things, unconventional movies, unconventional plots and relationships and movies and TV. And I love like the standard relationship, but if you're making a movie where the open relationship and it's that's the basis of the whole film is that they're in an open relationship and then at the end you make them open their eyes and want to only be with each other and marry each other that to me is just like a whole step back like i i didn't really appreciate that i really didn't um maybe other people would but i don't know i mean if i am such like do what you want to do type of person that maybe they were like trying to be like uh, make the you know the audience happy by being like oh they're not really happy with this, this arrangement but they seemed okay and then they had issues and I was like see this is why you shouldn't do this and I hate that <laughs> so, but it wasn't bad it's just like it kind of frustrated me a little bit um and then I watched how the rest was one this is a new to me um, I wanted it, be I mean, my mom bought it for me, but I wanted it because, like, every single person is in this. It has Henry Fonda, it has Carl Martin, Melden, Gregory Peck, George Papkard, <laughs> um, Robert Preston. I don't know a lot of these people, but Debbie Reynolds, James Stewart, L.A. Wallach, Jan, John Wayne, Richard Goodmark. It's narrated by Spencer Tracy, um, has Walter Brennan, David Bryan, Andy Devine. Raymond Ma Massey, Agnes Moorhead, Henry Morgan, Delmer Ritter, Mickey Shauncey, and Russ Tumblin. And it was directed by John Ford, J Henry ha ha Hathaway, and George Marshall. So this movie has so many people in it, and it was so much fun. It was such a fun movie. Um, and then I watched the Claudia Keshi Club, and this was the documentary, because I watched the New Babysitters Club, and I kept meaning to watch the documentary on Claudia, and I just kept forgetting, and so I finally watched it, and it was a great documentary. Okay, my TV show I watched this month is saying elsewhere. I have a full video on it on my channel, and I loved it so much, like, the first two seasons, for some reason, I was just struggling. I didn't want to watch it. I don't. I, don't, I was just not in the mood to watch things at that time. So I kind of like kept hitting off finishing the first two seasons. And then I finished it and I was like, that was so good. But it took me a little while to like get into it. Um, then I watched Dodge City and it has Errol Flynn and Olivia de Havilland in it, and they're my one of my all-time favorite um, couples. <laughs> they weren't a couple, but they were in love. Um, but they never nothing romantic happened between them. But they it's a very complicated <laughs> story. But I I love them, and they were good. To, they were great in this movie, and they're adorable together. So. And I watched Love Rosie. It was really cute. I really did like it. It was frustrating at times, but I did like it. Um, and I watched The New Little Woman. 
and I did like it. I like that they made it a point to say that Louisa Alcott did not want Joe to get married because Louisa never got married. So Louisa was, you know, but a woman is based loosely based on the family of Louisa. So she and Joe was her. And so she was like, I don't want Joe to get married because I, I'm not getting married. I don't want to get married. So, um, I like in the movie how, so it, Shresha Ronan, Joe, she's uh, talking to the editor or whatever and she's, um, explaining that. And I like that they put it in this. I prefer the Winona Ryder version, but I did enjoy this. I don't like Timothy Chalamet I, add as an actor. I really don't. I don't like Florence Pung, Pung, whatever, who played Amy. I'm not a huge fan of her movies. So I wasn't like into their performances as mu that much. But um, I, I loved, um, I didn't like the actress who played Beth either. Like I didn't feel like any sort of connection to her at all. But I loved, um, I thought Emma Watson as Meg was a really weird choice, but I, I did like her, but that was a weird choice to me, but I thought she did good. Um, I loved, um, Laura Dern as Mormy, but Susan Sarandon is the best Mormy in the whole, in all the versions. To me, she's just the warmest one. Um... But yeah, I enjoyed it. I didn't know, I don't know why they cast that one actor to play the professor because um, I love the actor, Gabriel Brun, Brun? I don't know how to say his name, but you know, he, the, from the 90, uh, with the Nona Ryder one, he played the professor and I have a crush on that actor. And I love the professor in that version so much. Um, and I felt like the casting of the professor in this one was weird because I didn't think he was attractive at all. And like, I don't know, it was weird. And I loved the Venona Rider ending with the professor better than this version. I thought this version was kind of clunky and weird. <laughs> like, it was like, what? But um, the Venona Rider and the Venona Rider ending is perfect. I love that ending a lot better. Um, but again, I did like this version and the way that they added more of um, like Louisa's thoughts and what she wanted out of this book. So, out of the book. I mean, I don't think Louisa would have cared if they changed anything for the movie because she wasn't that attached to the book personally. Like, she just wrote it to make money. So, I don't think if she watched this, she'd be like, oh, that's, that was wrong. She'd just be like, whatever. So, I don't try to put too much thought into, like, what she would have, if she would have approved of it. Because she wouldn't have really cared, I don't think. But, um, I, I did enjoy a lot of it. But, you know, I, my heart belongs to the Nona Writer version, for sure. Um, and then I watched Wild Night with Emily. It's Molly Shannon and she plays Emily Dickinson. And it was a very interesting movie and I enjoyed it. Uh, and I watched Come and See and this film is so hard to watch. It really is. But it's beautifully filmed and acted and it's a very important subject. And, um... John, it's in it's a Criterion film and it is so deserved. It is so good. Um, then I watched I'll See You in My Dreams. This has Anne Blythe and it has Rhea Perlman and it has Elliot. I don't know his name. Sam Elliot. There you go. Sam Elliot. Sam Elliot. Um, and this was really fun and cute and sad and it was like a very interesting story kind of a very different kind of story and i appreciated that a lot um and then i watched while we're young and it has um 
I don't know of Naomi Watts. It has um, Ben Stiller. It has Adam Driver, and it has Amanda Seyfried. I'm not a fan of Adam Driver at all. Like, not even a little bit. <laughs> and he annoyed me in this movie, so there you go. Um, But I enjoyed this movie a lot. It was um, fun and real, and like the difference with generations, even generation closer um, in age and, you know, others. Um, there's still a conflict. There's still um, stuff that, like, my generation doesn't understand about what generation coming up. Um, and I really loved the struggle between uh, Ben Stiller and Adam Driver's character. It was so good. Okay, and then I watched um, Sabrina. No, 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 no. I watched another movie before then. What was it? Oh my gosh. Um, oh, I watched um, The Intervention today. I forgot about that. I watched The Intervention. Uh, no, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm all over the place today. And then after, while we were young, I watched Sabrina. And this is a weird thing because I never really want to watch this by itself. I always, like, I usually have an Audrey Hepburn marathon every year leading up to her birthday. And I forgot to do it this year, so I didn't do it. So I didn't get to watch this for the marathon. And maybe that's why I wanted to watch it uh, by itself. But also, I did a, I have a podcast and I did a episode where I talk about... Um, the drama <laughs> that was Lilia Minaji's uh, fleeing during this movie and uh, what, how it like, what that did to William and Archie's uh, careers later on, how that affected Pearson and Sizzles. But um, yeah, so I rewatched this and. I love Humphrey Bogart so much. I love both of them, but if I was her, I would I would pick Humphrey too because Humphrey was stable. I would pick Humphrey, you know, over William any day. I think William was handsome and talented. And I watched an interview with him yesterday where he was talking about how hard women have it in the industry, and I was like, William, you were a gem. I love you, but um. But I would, in a heartbeat, I would pick Humphrey over really old. Because <laughs> uh, Humphrey, again, is more, was more stable and more uh, honest and more of a person I feel like you could depend on more. So, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spoil it for you. But, um, but, yeah, she has to choose between Humphrey and William. Like, that's a great problem to have in your life, I feel. But yeah, I mean, I watched it by itself, and that's a movie that I like. This movie, I either watch it and I don't like it, or I watch it and I love it, and I loved it this time. So, <coughs> fun. Okay, and then I watched the intervention this morning. It has Colby Smolers, and it has Jason Witter, Witter, and it has. Um, a lot of people I don't really familiar with. Well, I had Natasha Leone and I think that's her. <laughs> and then it has, I don't know. That's a lot of people. It has people in it I'm not that familiar with. But um, it was really good. I've seen uh, on Instagram, I follow like movie quote blogs and stuff. And there was this people hitting this all over like movie quotes and um, like they had all, all these like movie quote instagram um pages put this would put, i would see it every time i would like on the discovery page or different movie quote instagram uh handles or pages and i was like i need to see this movie because there was a quote in on one of the pages that i just wanted so I maybe want to watch it and um, Colby and her husband are having problems and the crow is that 
she loves him, but she's not happy anymore. And um, it leads to a very good discussion in the movie, and it wraps things up really well. So I liked the movie. I did. Colby is not one of my favorite people. I'm not, I hate Robin. I don't know how about your mother. I'm just not a fan of her as an actress, to be honest. But I liked that part. I thought it was really real and really good, and... Um, the emotion was really great. And then there was a part where a friend who is engaged to Jason Ritter, like she has a meltdown over it, like all these things that are going on. It's just a really good movie. It really is. Okay, now we're on to the movie I just finished, Practical Magic. <laughs> um, I haven't watched this that much, and for some reason I just really needed to watch it but i kept paying it off i don't know I, I do this thing where i'm like i want to watch that and then i don't i keep not watching it and i hit thing the thing off and i don't know why it's like it's like well i want to but you know i don't want to at the same time but i had i want to finish it like again like a few minutes ago um but it's so good like to be honest the first time i watched it it did not really connect with me with me too much and then and so i was like that's cute i guess and then i watched this uh today and it just pit, like brought me so much joy i just really love this movie um a lot more now i don't know what changed but I love it so much. It has a young Evan Rachel Wood as uh, one of Sandra Bullock's daughter. And it has Thacker Channing. And Thacker Channing, I feel, is the, just is the best she's ever looked is in this movie. She looks gorgeous. <laughs> like, not that she's not, but I, I just feel like in this movie, she just looks so young so much like i don't know it's weird like, like not weird but it's just like i don't know i just feel like her hair looks really pretty her makeup is really pretty i love the outfits that they put her in she just looks like so pretty in this movie i couldn't i couldn't help i was like every scene she was in i was like oh my god she's so she, she's so pretty and i'm not like a shallow valid like vapid person like Oh my god, they're so pretty. I, I, I don't know. I just was just watching it. And I was like, she looks gorgeous. Um, and then it has, and then I love Nicole Kidman as a redhead. Can't really see. <laughs> Go back to being a redhead. It suits you, Nicole Kidman. It really does. And she looks great as a redhead. Um, and it has Aiden Quinn. And it has Diane Rest. Rest? I'm not so familiar with her. Um, yeah, and all oh, it has, um, Goran Benznisik, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he was Luca on ER, and I hate Luca, so, and then I hate him in this, because he's supposed to hate him in this, so, fun, that's fun, like, <laughs> that, uh, guy got to hate him for an actual reason, but <laughs> his character for an actual reason, uh, for being, like, not a good person but yeah those are all the movies i watched in august so that is all